Okay, welcome to this um, video on knife safety. Um, this is part of um, the virtual apprenticeship challenge that I'm doing. And I wanted to make it available on IGTV here as well as a resource to everybody. Uh, but if you're interested in the virtual apprenticeship challenge, which is a one month long course uh, on spoon carving that I offer, uh, be in touch. So first thing you notice is that my knife always has the sheath on it if I'm not using it. If I'm putting it down even for just a minute, I put the sheath on it. That both keeps the edge sharp, but it also protects me from accidentally hitting against it. Um, because you put the knife down because the phone rings and the next thing you know you've knocked it off the floor and the next thing you know you forget about it and you step on it with a bare foot and you got a cut foot. So. Um, always have a sheath on it. I find this style of sheath, which is made out of birch bark, but you can make it out of a cardboard box, uh, is the simplest. It's just a piece of birch bark that's folded over such that this is the middle, and then you fold it over, and then you fold the end up, and then I just tuck it in, wrap, 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 tuck it in at the other end in the slot there. So starts in, in between the layers there, ends in between the layers there and it's as wide as the blade and a touch longer than the blade is. Um, and it, that's super simple because you can't hurt yourself. It's easy to put on, take off, um, and uh, so you're more likely to do it than if it's something more cumbersome than that. So when it comes to using a straight knife, there are a couple things to keep in mind. The first thing is that uh, you almost never use the force of your arm that's holding the knife to actually drive the knife through the wood. Almost all the force for many of my cuts is coming from um, either a pivot, right, where I'm pivoting off of a point, whether it's here or if it's here, I'm pivoting, or if it's here, I'm pivoting. And pivots are safe because uh, by their very nature, they're not going towards anywhere. You're actually pulling the handle away, and that's what pivots the blade down, so you can stop on a dime. But uh, the other thing is uh, cuts like this. The, the force is actually coming from this hand that's holding the spoon, pulling back. So I'm actually pulling the wood against the knife edge, and that allows me to take forceful cuts, but it also allows me to take really delicate cuts. So whatever you're doing with the knife, you should be able to go really delicate, and if you can't, that's a sign that you're doing something wrong. So um, so in this instance, you call this the thumb push, but I want to start calling it the, the hand squeeze, because really what it is, is you're using, uh, you can see this here, you're pulling back with your fingers and then because this is on the blade next to uh, the knife, you're pulling back like that. And all this hand does is it changes the angle of engagement of the knife. So if I'm going around a corner, this is steering that knife edge going around the corner. If I'm going on a straight bit here, all I'm doing is controlling the depth of the cut by how much it's angled in. Um, but all the force is being transferred through my thumb, which is not really, my thumb isn't pushing. You'd be exhausted if you did it that way. But it's being transferred through this thumb to, from, from these fingers, which are pulling back like that. So really it's this hand, the off hand, that's doing the work. <clears throat> so the important thing is you'll notice that when I'm doing a cut like this, that where I'm cutting is offset from where my thumb is. If you try to do this, uh, it doesn't work nearly as well. You want to offset your thumb from where you're cutting and have where you're cutting happen between your thumb and over here. And, uh, and that way you end up exerting much more force on the piece of wood. So typically what I do is I, I plant the, the knife hand thumb right there at the edge and I put this one right next to it. Um, and that's usually where I'm at. If I'm really working up at the tip, I might space this out a little bit more, but even so, it's still offset. You can see if I'm using the tip, I'm, that tip is in between my thumb and my pointer finger of the off hand, and I'm using these fingers pulling back to do the cutting. And there might be a little bit of pivoting in there as well. So then the other major cut that's 
is called uh, a chest pull cut and this is the one where everyone's going to tell you you're going to cut yourself but the trick is you have the edge of the knife facing you and the tip is up and the real key is keeping your elbow in if your elbow's out and the knife slips there's a very real possibility that you'll stab yourself in the chest if your elbow's in and the knife slips, let's say the knife slips out, the fact that your elbow is pinned against your side keeps the knife away from your body. There's no way that it can actually hurt you if it's like that. So you can work real close to your body quite safely by just continuing to press more and more of your hand into your chest. So if you're working right up close to your chest, the base of your hand is pressed up against your chest and that's what's keeping you safe. Um, so those two combined, the the hand squeeze going away from yourself where where there's basically no force in this knife hand at all that's one cut and then the chest pull where the knife is straight up notice that my thumb is around the, the other side so I've taken it from here and I moved it over to here um, and that just gets it out of the way of the wood otherwise you bonk up against the wood here right so here I can get right up against the wood um, and it's keeping this elbow in. Now with long handles, to do long handles, you're, you're going to be tempted to have your your hand out and you got to be real careful out there because um, that's a classic case where if that knife were to slip out of the cut, all of a sudden it's coming in towards you and you've got a lot of force. You're using your, your back muscles, back and your shoulder blades, to really pull this back. So it's not so much your arm, it's sort of all of it, but you're using a lot of your back muscles. So there's a lot of force and you want to make sure that it's controlled by keeping your elbow in. Um, in general, when I've seen people cut themselves, it's because they're doing something fiddly here, and then they end up cutting their finger because they weren't aware that their finger was up, and then the knife slipped out and their finger was in the way. So be super aware of where your fingers are um, as you're carving, and what the knife is going to do if it slips out of the cut. If there's no force behind it because it's a, it's a hand squeeze, then great. Um, and in general, then your other hand is behind the blade anyways. Um, but if it's something more complicated, like a, a pivot cut or something, and you've got your thumb here, and it could slip and, and hit your thumb, well, that's no good. you got to get your thumb underneath the cut so it's out of the way, and everything's nice and clear for the blade to go around safely. Let me think if there's any more. Nope. I'll, uh, I'll do another video when I get around to using the hook knife.